First of all, thank you so much uh, for the invitation. It's uh, a great joy to be here with you and uh, specifically at this panel uh, with uh, esteemed personalities uh, from a sector that's currently being transformed significantly uh, in Greece. Uh, overall, I would say the technology sector, not only telecom per se. Uh, in reality, Greece is experiencing a digital spring in the last couple of years. I would say that uh, most of the people in this room are aware of the dozens of services, hundreds of services that we have managed to produce in a very challenging period. What COVID-19 effectively did was that it rendered what was an outstanding issue of the past, a catalyst uh, for tomorrow, it made it necessary. So in this regard, we, one of the core components of our reform was the creation of a government portal, gov.gr, where we put together the pre-existing digital services of the Greek state, around 500 a year back. And now we have more than 1,250 services. I continuously, I continuously make, uh, say this number mm -hmm. wrong, because it continuously changes. Every day we add up new services. But to have a sense of, the, of this digital spring that I'm mentioning, I would mention only one number that has changed in the last couple of years. And this is the number of, I would say, digital interactions, digital transactions that took place in Greece between 2019 and today. And we can assess this number and we can have access to this number by adding up to other numbers. How many times you logged in the various data sets of the state, how many times you use the taxes network that we have in Greece through your credentials, or how many times our interoperability center worked uh, by having a citizen say, have access to the center. So the state, in effect, asked for data itself and didn't ask a citizen for a specific uh, type of document. So if you add those two numbers up, you have a sense of the magnitude of how many times uh, you had dig a digital interaction. So what was this number in 2018? It was 8.8 .8 million interactions. This is prior to us coming into power in 2019. The number from 8.8 .8 million went to 34 million in 20, 2019, to 94 million in 2020, and now we have number, a number for the first semester of 2021, and it's 150 million uh, digital interactions only for six months. So in effect, the expectation for this year is more than 300 million digital transactions. It's an exponential curve. And this exponential curve is a function of the demand of services, COVID-19, digital skills becoming better, etc. But it's, I would say, primarily a function of supply, a function of all the new services that we managed to create. Of course, at the same time, while we're doing this upgrade in digital services, when we think of digital, we primarily think of four things. The first one is digitizing the state, so the, which is what I just said. And in effect there, we need to make a full spectrum of investments to add up, I would say, new possible digital services, new infrastructure investments, elect full electronic patient records, to give you one example, or a series of other things. The, the Greek state just procured a couple of months back an ERP, uh, for the state, which we lacked. Mm -hmm. And we had a dire need of, and it has been a holy cow of digital for more than 10 years. We procured it now. Uh, so digital services of the state is one thing. Digital services of the private sector is another thing. And there, in effect, the private sector has been traditionally more, I would say, advanced than the state. Uh, my claim would be that the state has managed to catch up, that the state is innovating right now, and that we need to make a series of investments in the private sector as well. And in reality there, we plan to produce a, a digital law for the private sector where we will incentivize the use of specific digital services in corporations and even in SMEs and effectively subsidize some of these transitions, which I would say are necessary, for instance, in the area of security or in, or in many other areas. The transition to the cloud is mm -hmm. another such area. The third is digital skills, the third pillar. And vis-a-vis uh, -vis digital skills, I would say that overall this is a challenge in Europe. Education overall is transitioning from the classical three-phase life model, education, work, pension, to a continuous education model where you will have a transition from traditional curricula to digital skills. And in reality, you will need to continuously reskill yourself, primarily in the digital sectors, enter, exit, and re-enter the, the workplace. Uh, and finally, telecom, which is a core area of interest for the two gentlemen mm -hmm. uh, 
sitting in this panel with me together with all the rest, of course. And in telecom, Greece has had significant challenges. We, we haven't managed to move the needle as quickly in telecom as we did in digital services of the state because there we could invest in platforms and we could deliver platforms very quickly. In telecom, you need to do a series of other things. In 5G, my claim would be that we managed to produce one of the most innovative possible frameworks, certainly in Europe, perhaps in the world. We instrumentalized uh, the spectrum auction in order to create a 5G market, a market for 5G applications through the use of a 5G specific fund, the Festos fund. We need to make much more significant inve investments in fixed, not only in wireless. And there, I think that we have started doing a series of things overall. Uh, the ultra fast broadband scheme for the so-called white areas uh, in fiber optics. Um, the super fast broadband scheme which subsidizes demand. But overall, in order to cover the gap analysis, and I will conclude with this, I think that the RRF and overall the funds that we have uh, right now provide us with the possibility to invest and implement 100% of our strategy, both in telecom and in digital and skills. Uh, it's a Marshall Plan of our age. And uh, specifically in digital, 25% of this plan is focusing on digital and telecom. We have published our plan. It's called the Digital Bible. Uh, it codifies more than 400 projects, more than 440 projects, actually, uh, in all these sectors. Most of these projects will be financed through the RRF. Some of them are smaller projects, but primarily we have conducted a very thorough gap analysis, policy area per policy area. And in the telecom sector, for instance, we're focusing on projects that uh, uh, vary from, uh, let's say, a microsatellite project, which is Thierry Breton's vision for Europe and in, in microsatellites, to 5G corridors, for instance, in Greece's major highways, or uh, fiber readiness for Greece's buildings in order to further subsidize the adoption of uh, fiber to the home. And we have a very firm belief that this plan is a game changer. The implementation of this plan will provide us with the capacity to not only catch up with other states, but to actually, I would say, leapfrog. And uh, this is uh, in tandem with the capabilities of Greek engineers. This is in, the, in parallel with uh, the capabilities that we have managed to showcase through specific projects. The vaccination platform is an obvious case study. It's one of the most successful vaccination platforms in the world, certainly in Europe, uh, in accordance with what the president of the commission stated last time she visited Greece. 5G is another such case. The adoption of the digital COVID certificate was a Greek proposal by the Greek prime minister. So overall, we're very optimistic that the progress that we have showcased in the last couple of years is a burning platform and the manifestation of what we can achieve in the next 10 years. And we have a very firm commitment to do so.